Welcome to another video from our Ultimate GED Math course. In this video, we will be looking at multiplication and division of whole numbers. This lesson will be from our pre-algebra course. It covers the topic very well, so we decided to use it here. Please watch the full video, especially multiplying with two digits and more, and also how to deal with zeros. Okay, let's dive in. Later. Multiplication of whole numbers. Let's go straight ahead and use an example to explain this. We want to multiply 235 by 4. We want to line them up from the units column as usual. Then we multiply each digit in the 235 by the 4, starting from the units column. So we multiply 5 by 4 to get 20. This is a two-digit number, so we write the zero and carry the two, as we learned when we were adding. Next, we multiply the three by the four to get 12, and add the two we carried. This gives us 14. Again, this is two digits, so we write the four and carry the one. Multiply the two by four to get eight. Don't forget to add this one. This gives us nine. The highest mistake students make here is forgetting to add the numbers they carried after multiplication. So please avoid that problem. Let's take another example. Multiply 54 by eight. Let's first line them up. Now we multiply each digit in the 54 by the 8. 4 times 8 is 32. Since this is double digit, we will keep the 2 and carry the 3. Next, we multiply 5 by 8. This gives us 40. We add the 3 we carried to get 43. Since there is no number to carry the 4 to, we just write it. Multiplying with double digits. Let's use an example to explain this. We want to multiply 753 by 62. Here again, we align them. We work with the two here first. We multiply each digit in the 753 by the two. So three by two is six. Then we do the five by two to get 10. This is a double digit. So we will keep the zero and carry the one. We now multiply the seven by two to get 14. Add the one we carried and we have 15. Let me wipe this one out so we do not get confused with our next steps. Next, we work on the six. We multiply each digit in the 753 by six. We do three by six to get 18. This is a double digit, so we have to keep the eight and carry the one. Now, since this six is in the tens place, we place its value from here, under the six. We write the eight down. We then multiply the five by six to get 30. Don't forget to add the one. We have a double digit, so we keep the one and carry the three. Next, we multiply the seven by the six to get 42. We add our three to get 45. Now the next step will be to add vertically. Since we just have six here, we bring it down. Next, we add the zero and the eight to get eight. We then add the five and one to get six. Finally, since we just have four here, we just bring it down. So this will be our final answer. Notice that if you are multiplying a three digit number, the idea will be the same. It will look like this. The first digit multiplies, and is placed starting from the unit place. The second digit multiplies and is placed starting from the tens place 
and the third digit multiplies and is placed from the hundreds place. You will then add the numbers from the unit column as usual to get this as your final answer. Multiplying with zero. When multiplying by a number with zeros behind, like 20, it is not necessary to go through the normal multiplication method. Example, the normal way we will go about multiplying 34 by 20 is this. We first multiply by the zero. We know that any number by zero is zero. So, four times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. Then we move to the two. Two times four is eight. Then two times three is six. We add them to get 680. A simpler way when the zero comes after the number, like 2300 or 20 or 500, will be to ignore the zeros when multiplying and bring them to your final answer after you are done. Example, let's multiply 72 by 300. Here we say we can ignore these two zeros. So we work on 72 times three. This will give us 216. Then after this, we just bring our two zeros after it. This will be our final answer. Please note that this does not work for zeros within digits like two, zero, five, or one, four, zero, two. The zeros must be at the end. Let's take an example to explain this. If you are given nine divided by four, we can write it in the long division form. The number here is our dividend. The four here is our divisor. To solve this, let's bring our four multiplication here. We want to find the number that is closest to nine, but not greater than nine. Here we will see that eight will be the closest to nine. We put the eight here. Then we find the number that multiplied the four to get eight. We see that the number is two. So we put the two as the quotient. The final step is to subtract the eight from the nine to get the remainder of one. So we can write our final answer as two remainder one. Let's take another simple example. We want to divide 18 by three. We write it in the long division method. Let's bring our multiplication table again. Remember, we are looking for the number closest to 18, but not greater. Here we notice that the closest number to 18 is 18 itself. So we write our 18 here. We know that three multiplied six to get the 18. So we write six as our quotient. Next, we will subtract. We notice that this will give us zero, meaning we have no remainder. So this is our final answer. Dividing larger numbers. Let's now look at a number that is larger. We want to divide 253 by two. When you have a larger number, it is encouraged to work on one digit at a time. So we start with the two. Let's bring our multiplication table. Same idea. We look for a number that is close to two, but not greater. Here we see that the number is two. We write our two here and the one here. We subtract and get zero. The next step in this method is to drop down the next digit and work on it. Again, same idea. We notice that the closest number to five is four. We put the four here and the two here. Our next step as usual is to subtract. We have five minus four to get one. Next we drop the three. So now we have 13 to work with. 
we know the closest number is 12. So we have our 12 here and our 6 here. We will subtract and have our remainder of 1. So our final answer is 126 remainder 1. Please note that the multiplication table will not be provided. That is why you have to memorize it. Let's take another example. 452 divided by 6. We work on a digit at a time. So we start with the 4. Since 4 is smaller than our divisor 6, we cannot divide it. So we will work with the 45. Let's bring our 6 multiplication table. We can see that the closest to the 45 is 42. We put our 42 here, and the 7 becomes our quotient. We then subtract 45 minus 42 to get 3. We drop the next number, which is 2, giving us 32 to work with. The closest number to 32 is 30 from the table. So we have our 30 here and the 5 up here. We can now subtract the 30 from 32 to get a remainder of 2. So our final answer is 75 remainder 2. Hope you enjoyed this style. We'll be using videos from our other courses from time to time, especially for topics that most students are already familiar with. Please like, share, and subscribe for more. Have a great day. See you in the next video.